2023 elections in view, tension in the air. These elections won't be about manifesto of parties, but about manifesto of the people and their dreams who want peace and prosperity. These words were from Narendra Modi, the 14th and current Prime Minister of India since 2014. Observing the just concluded U.S. House Representative Speaker election that led to the emergence of Kevin McCarthy as Speaker after about 15 rounds of ballots shows that politicking processes may not be easy and disagreements may erupt, but violence can be avoided intentionally by different parties involved. As we Nigerians prepare for the general election in February, we are currently faced with issues ranging from different group clashes, as in the case of the recent Yoruban nation agitation in Lagos, hate speech and incitement, as in the case of public comments by some politicians and public personalities, and even by some celebrities, unfortunately. It is important to note that religion and faith are personal affairs, and thus should not be turned into an instrument of violence. Tribal affiliations are good, but our collective national identities as Nigerians is greater and more important than ethno-religious affiliation. Our focus as Nigerians, regardless of our political, tribal or religious affiliations, should be about what we want and what would be really good for our nation. This would be a guide for us in choosing our next political leaders in the forthcoming general elections. You were saying something about abuse and other things. I want to extrapolate on this. This is election season. That attitude of being his to put out bad behavior to hurt people, to be arrogant. There's a case of a popular celebrity called Brimo. Recently, I think this week, there, there have been petitions. People are calling for him to be removed from, I think as an award, so I'm not quite sure the name. But um, he made a statement about a certain tribe in Nigeria and he singled out that tribe and saying some things that are not very good. Mind you, everyone in Nigeria listens to music. There's no tribal sentiment in music. But if you have a particular idea, why is making divisive comments? It's a form of abuse. Don't you think so? Yeah, I agree. And even some politicians making out some statements, oh, this set of people are this, this set of people are bad. So what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, you know, um, I kind of like agree, right, with the whole fallout, you know, that happened. And that piggies back to what I said earlier about, you know, we're being abused on a roll. The biggest thing, you know, happening right now in Nigeria is the elections, right? And this is a period where um, we pretty much has, have to be very careful at the kind of things, you know, that we push out there, the kind of narratives, you know, and things like that. But again, when you think about it, this is the time also people just are programmed to pretend like they pretty much care about um, the masses. Now, this is me talking about our politicians, right? It's almost like it's a constant um, behavior. And I've said this before on The Advocate, where we had any, if you remember, and I said is the concept of learned helplessness, where we have been used to abuse, we've been used to this kind of treatment. You know, every four years, somebody comes up with some lofty stuff and, you know, after the elections, the person wins and then they disappear into thin air and then they show back after four years. And it's almost like, um, even, I mean, if not that um, talking is important, talk is not really cheap as we think, as we, we say, it's important to just keep talking about it. But beyond talking about it, what are we doing um, intentionally about it? What are we doing intentionally to say, okay, we're not going to take this, we're not going to condone this, what um, systems are we putting in place, how are we getting involved, you know, and things like that. A friend of mine was telling me how how they made it hard for him to get his PVC in his ward, like literally made it hard. Like he saw that those in there, because some people were getting their PVCs, some people were not getting their PVCs, you know. So why are they making it hard for some people? Why is the system designed to be hard? These things should be easy, but because some people still see Nigeria as some, as some game, as some lottery, 
that they have to win, you know, and they they program the system in such a way that it's hard to, you know, to get some basic level things done that it doesn't take rocket science to get it out. So I think we should start moving from just talking about it to intentionally doing something about it. So that at the end of the day, we come here and advocate, we talk, 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 talk. What is the intentional behavioral change to some of these issues? And, and that's where I stand. Okay, I'm going to go to another aspect of preparing for elections. Um, we have election in view, but there's a problem in the room. We listen to the um, fact that in some part of Nigeria, I'm scared for what will happen in, in the south, south, uh, sorry, in the southeast. Nam the Kanu is still currently being held by the president, despite the court ruling. People thought maybe there will be a release or something. No clear statement about that. But issue of sit at home and other other agitations in the southeast. And then recently, what well, something happened just on Monday in Kaduna. Are you aware that uh, was it? Yeah, I think Kaduna. Um, some seven officers of the Nigerian Security and the, uh, Civil Defense uh, Corps, they were ambushed, killed, I think in line of duty, at the mining sites. I guess they were on operations day or exercise or so. So you see, like, there is large scale of insecurity. The question is, we are preparing for a new election, we elect new leaders. What is the way forward? Are these people, these politicians that are in the room, are they really, did they really care about Nigerians? Did this, like almost every, almost every week or almost every day, there's always a killing happening. You know what happened last year? Are you aware of what happened to us before the week of Christmas where they killed 30 something people in, in Kaduna, a particular village in Kaduna? So it's like, and a day before that, they also kill. So like, it's a constant thing, like it's a normal thing. And you don't hear people, politicians talking about it. They see it as a normal thing. Like, oh, they only kill 10 people. Okay, it's, it's not serious. Uh, no, so you talk about I, this. I, I think the head of INEC, in a speech, did he on its behalf recently, addressed it. Um, and he did say that um, if uh, insecurity did not improve, there was a possibility that elections would be postponed. But he did say so. Uh, mm -hmm. So, but... Um, I take a different view, and when I was asked about it once, I said, um, the elections are really, I don't think they will be postponed. You see, insecurity has been with us for some time now. Uh -huh. It's big thing. Uh, a lot is happening in the Maghreb. Um, wh what you are seeing here is just a reflection, a small reflection of what is going on above us. And in fact, I think I was reading somewhere last week, um, there's a clash between um, the popular group. Uh, what's the pop the popular group that we have? Iswap uh, uh, against the popular Boko Haram. Boko Haram and ISIS are clashing above us. Mm -hmm. There's some huge clash going on. So there will be insecurity. Uh, it's a condition that is baked in now. Uh, there was a time uh, the British people had IRA. I, 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 bombing all their places and all that. Democracy still went on. It's just like I said, in the case of show business, the show must go on, democracy must go on. There may be up and downs and conflicts, we must go on, we must go on. We must go on with these elections. Uh, yes, sit at home with the, in the East and all that, but the security uh, forces must up their game. There's no, you know, there's no two ways about it. We must hold the elections. This is, it's four years. It's time for elections and we must hold it. We must find a way to do it. So uh, that issue of not holding the elections, I think it's just a, rhetor a, a, rhetor a rhetorical flourish uh, that the INEC man is doing. I don't think that anything is going to come for it. The elections must go on and they will go on. Yes, there's insecurity, but well, that, it is what it is. So we have to go on. Uh, they, we have to go on with the business of democracy. And, okay. and government has to change. I, the, the other thing I was going to say about what you said about religion. You see, eh, religion is the easiest thing for any politician to latch on to. It's, it's, it's the easiest thing. I, if I want to divide all of us now, I will start by dividing us along. I'm a Catholic, you are a Protestant and all that. And, all that. and um, people will lie behind me, those who are for my faith and all that. So, it is not even a Nigerian problem, really. I think we blame our politicians. But it's supposed to be a personal affair. No, I'm coming to it. 
uh, we, we blame our politicians too much. Your headline was uh, Naranda Modi. Yeah, Modi, uh, yeah. Yes, but that is a, a Hindu nationalist yeah. promoting exactly the same religious thing that we are talking yeah, about. Uh, exactly. Opinion. Uh, so you see, our Nigeria he's not better than our Nigerian politicians. Yeah. Uh, over time, you will get people that are more middle of the road and that are not like that. But I don't think our politicians are especially bad. Let's not uh, blame them. Uh, they, they, they are reacting to the level that we also are. They, they, are. Uh, they are a reflection of who we are. And uh, as I'm going to talk about the education, I always see education as the seed that will take, begin to take us a little out of it. Because if you look at places, other places, England and all those places and all that, you'll find that it is when they began to tamper the issues of religion a little bit with the Enlightenment, Reformation and all those things, that their societies began to become more stable. So I don't think we should flagellate ourselves, beat ourselves up too much about these things. We are going to get there. Will improve. You deserve the opinion of the uh, Yes, yes. I agree with you. And, and mm -hmm. Mr. Muyu, I was going to ask you something. <laughs> no, let me just quickly okay, speak to what okay. he says. Mm -hmm. What he says about the show must go on. Because the show will go on, mm -hmm. whether we like it or not. And I think that one of the things that we must display as the electorate is maturity. And I think one of the highest level of maturity in this particular instance is for us to be able to disagree without being disagreeable. Because yeah. on February 16th, you will still be my neighbor. Mm. Exactly. You will still be my business partner. Exactly. You will still be my... Do you see what I'm saying? Exactly. That is not going to change. Yeah. On one hand. On the other hand, all these politicians, they are friends. Oh, yeah. 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 People forget. Oh, yeah. They are all billionaires. Yeah. And they are all friends. Yeah. All their children go to the same schools. Yeah. They go to the same resorts when they travel. They go to the same hospitals. Yeah, you are here in your trenches. They all agree to remove themselves more. <laughs> 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 you know, they all agree to remove themselves more. You know, they have an agenda. But you're here in your trenches, suffering no data. With the small data you have, you're making noise on social media. With the small money you have, yeah, you give yourself a headache over people that, in many cases, don't even care about you True. and don't know you. True. You must remember that the show must go on. The show will go on. Yeah. The elections will come and go. Then that your neighbor that you have been fighting and refused to talk to, you know, somebody will be president, and it will still be your neighbor. And one day your house will catch fire. And you will now ask yourself, do I, the police will give me water. We must be careful with this. We must be mature with these things. And just, you know, that's just my own, you know, yeah, I was opinion. Ask you, you know, your strategies uh, and uh, business strategies. You know, uh, as a business strategies, let's look at this. They said that we need, Nigeria don't just need a president, we also need a CEO. You so need a what? A CEO. Mm. Like, run Nigeria as a company. Yeah. Beyond just the regular the president government. Yeah. Now, the question is, you see the problem, we're having mass unemployment, economic downturn, blah, blah, blah. There are many of them. The question now is uh, about the economy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the manifestos of all the major or all the aspirants, do you think that the focus is more of the people? Because we, we need the manifesto as the people. It's not just all about the manifesto of each party or each candidate. What about the manifesto of the people? What do we really want? about the economy. Everyone is crying, things are difficult. So what's the way out? Yeah. So, I mean, did you ask what's the way out? I'm not the next president, but, <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> yeah, you know, but you know, as, as far as, yeah, uh, pre as far as the economy is concerned. If concerned. you're president, <laughs> yeah. 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 strategies, I'm sure you won't be many yeah. of them. So. As a matter of fact, <laughs> <laughs> who told you that? <laughs> 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 anyway, so, must be, I mean, in, in all honesty and in most, in the most serious note, I, I think that, I mean, we were talking earlier and we talked about somebody being asked questions and their answer. Mm -hmm. I think that the next CEO of Nigeria must focus on two things, security and economy, mm -hmm. right? Um, I was speaking to someone, and in, in light of this, I, was to, I speak to a lot of these people, and the person I've heard has been most profound. I said, he said, you see, a CEO, a governor, a president, anybody, they have only two jobs. One, the protection of life and property of their citizens. And two, a level playing field for them to make wealth. So he said, protection of life and property and the pursuit of happiness. And many times, pursuit of happiness is just economic stability or economic yeah. improvement, right? Those are the only two jobs you have as a CEO. And you must be thinking about that. First, security, you just talked about insecurity. You know, it's, uh, where do we even start? But I also know that we have the capacity 
I also know that if you really, really, really want to solve these issues, because in most of the insecurity that we have, they're more political than they are even actual, you know, loss of life. They, they, they've weaponized it. You know, they, they weaponized the insecurity to match and fit political, you know, strategies. Yeah. On one hand, on the other hand, the economy is the same thing. These people have weaponized poverty. Hmm. Because when they weaponize poverty, then they're able to carry out a lot of things. I mean, so if someone says to you, oh, when I'm governor, you have food, you have. For God's sake, that is my fundamental human <laughs> right. Do you see what I'm saying? It's, it's, you're not a super performing governor if I'm richer today than I was five years ago. That's exactly how it should be. That's why you were elected. It goes back to service. That's what you're elected to do when you're a leader. So those are the things that I feel that people must put on the front burner. And if you get these, things, these two things right, insecurity and you know, the economy, I think that will be in a better place. I, I think we should place this thing in context. First of all, if you look at where the world is now post-COVID, uh, there's a bad wind blowing in the world right now. You see, this morning I was watching Egypt, and uh, there's a serious problem in Egypt right now. Mm -hmm. uh, in, Inflation very high okay. and all that. You see Ghana. Ghana is taking the IMF loan and I don't know what our own will be, but Ghana is already taking the IMF loan mm -hmm. and all that. Post-COVID, there's a bad wind going around the world. Well, it's after, during COVID now. Yes, but it's affecting... What is it whilst, we, whilst, we, whilst we blame our own government because it has taken too much debt. Mm -hmm. It took in too much debt and all that and all that. Without uh, Even if you are doing infrastructure, you must still balance it against what you are borrowing and all that. We must blame our government for that, but look around our peers. Mm -hmm. South African economy is not doing well. Um, the Egyptian economy is not doing well. You see uh, Ghana has taken IMF loan and all that. So you must tamper it with a little bit of um, caution when we talk about that. Our insecurity is a huge problem. But like I said, what is going on in both of us is a major part of the problem, particularly in the north. Now, we used to be a superpower, and we remember when this current or the head of state was the commander in just, and when there was something above in charge. He simply went there and flushed everybody out. And in fact, he, uh, we understand he drove half into the country with his troops until they told him, ah, you are not in a, please come back and all that. The head of state had to call him back and all that. But we are not the superpower I that we are. Babangida. I'm no. sorry, not Babangida. I'm the head uh, of state now. Yeah, that's that's right. yeah. The yeah, current the president. president yeah. uh, yes. 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 So we are not the superpower militarily and otherwise that we are. You know, years of economic decline and all that has led to our army not being exactly the same that it was at that time. So, uh, well, that may be part of what is going on in the north. Um, we need a little bit of the cooperation of the world. We are not as strong. We need, we need a leader who is not just a military man now, but is also a very good diplomat. Diplomat in a the sense of... Too. A good strategy. Diplomat in the sense of bringing all these West African states together. And, you know, there are people that have investments in Africa and all that. The French are here and all that. Finding, the Russians, the Chinese, uh, the Americans finding now, a way to bring that. a proposal to all of them and saying, come, this is not working well for all of us. What do we do about it? Because we, on our own, we don't have the resources to do that. When it comes to places like the East, you must be a good diplomat there. Part of the, the problem, yes, part of the problem, prob part of the problem of the uh, East is. Uh, we know the civil war and what happened and all that. You need a leader who brings them back in. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. gentlemen, for your mm -hmm. insights. Mm -hmm. Just like you have all said, so our, our politicians, especially the flag bearers of the parties, please, we need, a we need a politician, a leader, a diplomat, a CEO, and a peace broker. And more importantly, we need to consider the our manifestos as a people, what we really want in Nigeria, because religion is a personal affair. Our tribal affiliation is not as important as our identities in Nigeria. So let's hope for a better tomorrow and a peaceful election. Thank you. Stephen Agiode is next after the break. <laughs>